Hello and welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 168. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the importance of tradition and how you can reconcile that with new techniques, new developments, and basically progress in the martial arts. It's going to be a good episode, and I'm probably going to step on a few toes, and I'm not even going to apologize for it. Who am I? My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here on this show, and I'm also the founder at Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. You can check us out at whistlekick.com and see all the great stuff that we make. If you want to check out the show notes for this or any of the other 167 episodes, yes, sometimes I have a hard time believing that I've recorded this many episodes, you can find those at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to subscribe to the newsletter so you can find out about what's going on at Whistlekick or you know some of these great guests that we have coming up once in a while, we'll let you guys know about a big guest that's coming and we'll kind of slip it out through the newsletter, you can sign up at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. How do you balance history with new information? That's really the heart of the question, isn't it? How do we balance history with new information? Because tradition is important. Tradition breeds unity. It brings us together as a martial arts community. And it gives us a sense of history, a shared experience. And it's because of that shared experience that When you meet another martial artist, regardless of their rank or the style they train in or where they're from, there's a camaraderie. Hopefully you've experienced that. I get to experience it all the time through my travel and I love it. One of my favorite things about being a martial artist. If there was no sense of tradition within the martial arts, there would be no martial arts. Everyone would be doing their own thing. And it's that unified messaging that we have that cohesiveness, because arts don't change that much from style to style or as a style ages, it's been really good for our marketing. If people understand what karate is, they have a pretty good understanding of what karate is going to be in the United States or in Japan or in some other country. Same can be said for Kung Fu, whether it's in China or Africa. At the same time, people change. Times change. Weapons change. We have new research, new understanding of the way people work and the body moves. We have new needs. What happens when those new developments seem to fly in the face of tradition? That's what this episode is all about. The best example I can give, or maybe the best way to start this conversation, is to think about the growth of street-worthy or practical combat arts. I'm not going to use the term martial arts because not all of them really are martial arts. When we think of something like Mr. Tony Blauer's spear system, and that's a great episode. If you haven't checked it out, we'll link it at the show notes. Uh, Mr. Chris Sutton came on, talked to us about defense. And then you have systems like Krav Maga that we've heard about on this show that is more of a modern take on combat, as well as plenty of other things. All you have to do is look at a martial arts website or blog or pick up the latest copy of Black Belt or something. You're going to see things in there that really are contradictory to what most of us learn in a martial arts school. In these street combat practices, not only are we learning different ways to handle a fight, or avoid a fight. They're talking about completely different techniques, different attitudes for how to approach these situations. How does a traditional martial artist look at what they're doing and then look at what these folks are doing and not feel some tension? I do. You probably do. It's okay. It's okay to look at what's going on in these new developments and feel that maybe what you've been training is a little bit threatened. When I, as a traditional martial artist, look at the growth of mixed martial arts, I feel a little sad. Sometimes I feel a little threatened because I love what I do and I want everybody else to love what I do, but not everyone's going to love what I do. And that's okay. There are different martial arts because there are different people. I would rather have people doing mixed martial arts than sitting on the couch. I think that even though I feel traditional martial arts have more of the personal development aspects. Mixed martial arts have more of an opportunity for that. 
street-wise martial arts, combat systems, whatever you want to call them, have more of an opportunity for that than someone eating a bag of potato chips. So I appreciate those choices, and I'd rather people choose something than nothing. It's important to remember why traditional martial arts exist. Yes, there's the combat aspect, but it's about personal development. We talk about this on almost every episode. There are lots of great street fighters out there, but not all of them are good people. Maybe you you could even say most of them are not good people. I, I don't know. You can say, overall, martial artists are good people. You're not going to get into a fight every day of your life, but on almost every day, you're going to need to operate as a functional member of a community. Thus, if we look at the priorities in traditional martial arts, it's on growth. And that's appropriate. That's the right thing to focus on. More and more, I'm seeing traditional schools that bring in new techniques and new knowledge, whether it's conditioning or how they simulate sparring. When we look at the most successful martial arts schools, financially anyway, most of them are using some sort of technology to run their business, websites, social media, student tracking software. That technology didn't exist when their style was founded, yet because of their openness to new methodologies, they're able to teach their art to more people. That's growth. That's important. That is the right thing to do. You don't need to drop all of the old to bring in the new, especially when you consider martial arts as something that was meant to evolve. Every single martial arts style's founder felt they had taken their knowledge and moved it forward for the very reason that they didn't simply continue teaching what they had been taught. The reason they gave it a new name, the reason they did all of this was because they felt they had made some progress towards building something better. I can't imagine that those same founders would think that what they developed was the absolute best and only good way of doing things. In order to know where you're going, you have to know where you came from, especially in martial arts. We've learned the traditional ways for a lot of different reasons. But one of the strongest ones is to learn why the things we do now are the way they are. From teachings and books, we can gain context on a variety of things. But that doesn't mean we stop developing as people, nor should our arts stop developing. Tradition is often held onto as gospel, but in many cases, it seems like it's a crutch. If we hold up tradition as the only important thing, or the priority in our martial arts training and teaching, It means that we don't have to continue developing new understanding of our craft, but we do. Here's an example. As much as I love the fact that General Choi put all of his Taekwondo knowledge into an encyclopedia, a book that is utilized and read and studied by, I'm going to say millions across the globe, I'm also a little sad by it because some of those people that train in that style may never grow beyond what he wrote down. Because there's so much context there, it almost discourages further development. Now, if you're in a school that doesn't do this, please don't take offense. It's simply something I've observed in some schools that I've trained at. In all but rare cases, I've found that the new knowledge I gain can be incorporated into what I know. As I develop better understanding of, let's say, biomechanics through weight training, gymnastics, CrossFit, etc., my stances start to shift subtly because I understand better about how my body works. My stances become stronger because of that outside knowledge. But my stances aren't wrong. I'm not taking a front stance, for example, and dramatically changing anything. I'm talking about subtle shifts in foot positioning or where my knee is placed on over my front leg. I can say the same thing for hand and foot techniques. They've become faster and more powerful because of additional knowledge that I've gained within other styles and completely outside of the martial arts. I don't know what the great masters, the style founders knew about any subject, especially biomechanics. But I train with the belief that if I can find ways to improve things, even if those improvements are only relevant to me, then I should work on them. I should develop them. 
and understand how they make me a better martial artist. I think that's the easiest way to reconcile the differences or, or the tension, the conflict between tradition and new developments. To first understand the way it is, the way it was presented to you from prior generations, the way, and I'm going to use some air quotes here, it's supposed to be done. But then, and only then, do you start to expand it and bring in your own personal experiences and understanding. Why should this newer, modern understanding have to come second? Because it's heavily biased on the opinions of one person, you. Whereas the traditions we teach have stood the test of decades or maybe centuries. I believe in the free market as a business owner. And I think that that same concept of the free market applies just as well to martial arts. The truly useless arts will die off, or they already have died off. They've become fads. If your art has been around for some time, there's value there, and you owe it to yourself and those that came before you to understand it before you change it. At the same time, when you teach it, that foundation of tradition should always, always come first. Otherwise, you're diluting the effort of your previous generations and you're applying a very heavy amount of bias to what you're educating your students with. That's not really fair to them or yourself. I want to thank you for listening. And I want to know, what did you think? How did I do with this one? This is a tough topic and one that, frankly, I wrestled with quite a while before I even attempted to record it. I sat down, I spent a lot of time with my notes, and I'm not sure how I did. And that's genuine. So I'm curious as to your opinion. If you want to email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you want to leave feedback for the episode, you know, on the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Of course, we're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram. Those are the main ones. We're, you, we're at whistlekick everywhere. And I'd like to thank you in advance for those comments, for sharing the episode, for all the wonderful ways that you support Whistlekick and this show. The show continues to grow. We have some great, great, amazing um, guests that we're in conversation with right now, people I can't even talk about yet, but uh, you can probably hear the smile in my voice. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.